Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Grego, and I'm a senior end user computing specialist solutions architect here at AWS. This is the second in a series of videos where I will walk you through a complete step by step deployment of Citrix DAS on Amazon Workspaces Core. This video will cover the second step in the process connecting your Citrix Cloud to your AWS account. Subsequent videos in the series will cover the remaining steps. I'll start today with a quick recap of the Citrix DAS on core deployment flow. We'll then review the AWS role required for Citrix Cloud Management, how it functions, and where to find the required permissions. Last, I will visually walk you through connecting a Citrix Cloud account to an AWS account in the respective consoles. So like I said before, we're on the second step in the process. Uh, in the previous video, we, we covered how to create a resource location by deploying Citrix Cloud connectors in EC2 um, and then associating them with a location within the Citrix Cloud console. This is the second step where we cover how the Citrix Cloud is going to talk to the resources within your AWS account. For Citrix to take actions on your behalf within your AWS account, you must authorize that access. To accomplish this, Citrix utilizes the Assume Role feature within AWS Identity and Access Management. Assume Role allows Citrix access without requiring you to generate and input long-term credentials into Citrix Cloud. You create a role within your AWS account that contains the required permissions. That role has a trust policy that allows Citrix's specific IAM user to assume it within your account. We will dig a bit deeper on the specifics of that role and its permissions in just a moment when we review that policy in detail. When Citrix DAS needs to manage your workspaces environment, the Citrix IAM user assumes the role in your account and then performs those required actions. We will now walk through where to find this policy and how to set up the IAM role within your account as well as review in a little bit more detail what exactly that role does. All right, so we're gonna start here over in the Citrix DAS console. Um, and just a reminder to get back to the section for the integration of Workspaces Core. Uh, we're gonna go under Quick Deploy, then Workspaces Core. Um, and then for, for Get Started, you'll see that the five steps that are required. So right now we're on step two, which is connecting your AWS account to your Citrix account. Um, so if you click the button here, that'll actually bring you to uh, the screen where you can connect your accounts. Um, you'll see that I have a couple here uh, from a previous setup. Um, but then we're going to click Connect Account. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that Citrix is giving you a CloudFormation template that has all of the required permissions. So what you can simply do is download that file, um, import it into CloudFormation, or give it to your um, your cloud team that's responsible for that, and they can import that. Um, or they can copy the permissions out of there that are required um, into whatever automation tool that you know that they're using to to build out your environment. Um, so when you click on this, you're going to get a file that's downloaded um, to your machine, um, and this file is customized for your environment. So it has your specific customer ID um, as well as the ARN that's required from the Citrix side um, for your specific environment uh, embedded in it already. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that policy. We can take a quick look at um, exactly what's in it and what it's doing. Um, so here we have the policy um, inside of this CloudFormation template. Um, the first thing you're going to do if you're doing CloudFormation is um, give it a name for the role that you want, want it to appear as in your console. Um, once you've done that, it's going to deploy two resources into your account. Essentially, these are two different um, IAM roles. The first is the Workspaces default role. That's a, a service linked role. That's what the Workspaces service needs um, in order to take actions within your account on your behalf. Um, so this will create this automatically for you with the required permissions. Um, the more interesting policy here is the Citrix Assume Role policy. Um, this is what gives Citrix and, and their user the specific um, roles and requirements and, and permissions that it needs to take actions within your AWS account. Um, so the first thing that we're going to notice here is that this doesn't just open it up to be assumed by anybody. Um, it is locked down. I've changed and obscured some of these numbers just to, to keep it um, from being uh, specific to any, an individual account. Um, but it is locked down so that only this specific Citrix user in this specific account coming from your specific Citrix Cloud tenant, so again, this metadata will be sent as part of the request, is allowed to assume this role. Um, so not anybody is just gonna be able to assume this role within your account. 
Um, and in fact, Citrix can only assume this role within your account if the commands are being issued from your specific cloud tenant. Um, so that's this top section here, the policy document. Um, then below that, we'll have a list of all the permissions that Citrix is allowed to have. So this is you know, permissions to look within service code is to make sure that you have uh, sufficient capacity in order to deploy uh, workspaces, um, as well as um, you know, the specific workspaces, directory services, and other uh, AWS services that are, are used as part of deploying your workspaces environment. Again, this, this policy will give Citrix all of those um, permissions. So once you've downloaded that file, um, you can click next. And what, what Citrix is looking for now is the actual ARN or the resource uh, identifier of the role that was created as part of importing it into, uh, into CloudFormation. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through doing this through CloudFormation. Again, you know, your administrators can take the permissions out of our CloudFormation and put it into something like Terraform or another automation tool. Or if, if they prefer to manually, they can manually build out um, the, the IAM role and the policy. Um, but in this case, we're gonna we're gonna use uh, the CloudFormation template exactly as it comes from Citrix. So we're gonna click Create a Stack over here within the CloudFormation console in AWS, and we're gonna upload a template. And we're gonna choose that template that we just downloaded. We can give the stack a name, so we can Citrix. And then this is the name of the role as it's going to appear within your account. So this will have to adhere to whatever naming conventions you have within your environment. Um, Citrix recommends um, that you click this box here to pre preserve successfully provisioned resources in case of a failure. Um, there's a very specific reason why they want you to do that. Um, as we saw before, that there, there's two roles that are created as part of um, that CloudFormation template. The first being Citrix Assume role that, we, that you give a name to. The other is that default role, that Workspaces default role. Um, that may already exist in your account if an administrator has been into the Workspaces console previously. Um, because it already exists, their CloudFormation template will throw an error um, because it can't create something that's already there. By checking this box, you'll keep that newly created Citrix Assume role policy um, and not roll it back just because there was a failure creating the default role. Um, you then have to acknowledge the fact that this is creating IAM users and resources within your account. And then you can go ahead and, and deploy that. Um, so this will take a few seconds uh, in order to create this role. You'll see here we have both the assume role and then that default role within this account. Okay, now that that's complete, you can hop out over to the, the outputs tab. Um, and this is gonna give you the actual ARN that you need to put into Citrix Cloud. So you can copy this ARN exactly as it's uh, shown to you here on the screen. You're gonna head back over to the DAS console and you're gonna plug that ARN right here into the console and then give it a name. Again, this is the name as, as what the account is gonna appear as uh, in your console. So I'm gonna call this um, video demo. It's gonna, then gonna check that you have the right permissions. If there's an issue with that policy, it'll throw an error at this point. Um, but here we have a, a green check. It tells us that the required permissions are there. Um, it then wants you to pick a region. Um, so this will be the region within the workspaces service that you're going to deploy your desktops. Um, now keep in mind, this is um, this, this a connection between Citrix Cloud and uh, Citrix Workspaces is region specific. So you will need uh, a connection for every uh, combination of Citrix Cloud account and AWS region and account. When that's all set, you'll click through next, next and click finish. Um, at this point, it's gonna complete the setup and you should see uh, eventually here, uh, we now have a third AWS account connected, um, the video demo account. All right, so now that we've gone through and we've seen how to make that connection between your Citrix account and your AWS account, I just wanted to reiterate a couple of those um, key considerations uh, that I mentioned previously. Um, the first, the fact that that Citrix to AWS connection is region and account specific. So it's a combination of both the AWS account and the region. Um, what that means is that if you have two AWS accounts, you need to create two connections, even if it's to the same region um, within AWS. If you want to deploy workspaces into two separate regions, even within the same AWS account, that does require two connections, again, because that connection is region specific. 
Um, a couple other things to keep in mind is that when you're making multiple connections from the same Citrix account to the same AWS account, you don't need to create another assume role. You can use that same assume role because all of the permissions, you know, they're not region specific. Um, they're just specific to your specific um, Citrix account and your AWS account. Um, and secondly, when you're making multiple connections to the same AWS account for multiple different Citrix accounts, so let's say a dev and a prod, or you have two different uh, Citrix tenants that you manage, um, you can use the same I am assume role policy. Um, you just need to add the additional Citrix Cloud external ID to the assume role to allow that secondary Citrix account to also assume that role um, and have the permissions that it needs. Um, so there'll be a bunch of resources that you'll find in the description of the YouTube video um, that cover various aspects of the workspaces on core service, um, both our documentation and Citrix's documentation, um, as well as links to our AWS EUC on community.aws. Um, and then a link to the rest of our uh, end user computing YouTube playlist um, with a bunch of other videos about Workspaces Core, as well as all of our other EUC services. Uh, again, thank you. This is the second in, in our series of videos on setting up Citrix DAS with Amazon Workspaces Core. Um, I look forward to bringing you the final three videos in this series that, that complete that, that visual walkthrough and the setup of your first environment. Thank you.